This is going to cover the second and third stages of a nine-stage still life drawing. In the first stage, you've done your gesture and located objects approximately. So when you ratchet into the second stage, you have to go back through the gesture and develop every single form that's in the still life. Now, I have a fairly simple still life, so it's not going to be a hugely time-consuming process, but I do want to pay attention to all the details. If you have a lot of objects in your still life, or the objects are incredibly complex, then you have your work cut out for you, and so this stage may take a long time. And what you're going to do is go through and draw every single object as if it were a wireframe model, even if objects overlap each other. So I have a stack of two books, and I drew every side, all six sides of each book, so that I know exactly where the bottom book is, and I can make sure books don't overlap and forms are placed where they need to go. Um, and as I do that, I can also begin to start checking, <coughs> which is the third stage, I can begin, I can begin to check and make sure that everything is correct and I don't have any divergence. So these stages kind of get compressed together once you get pretty efficient at it. Because in, in a certain sense, developing the forms in this way is checking your own gesture. And as you develop, you're kind of evaluating and deciding whether these forms that you've created are correct. So in you're going to kind of do this in passes. So every time you sit down and put pencil to paper, you, you want to work your way through um, different sections of the drawing and try to bring the drawing up as a whole. So I can go through and I can do the, the forms like I've done here and make sure they're all in their wireframe positions. And then I can go back and do all the shadows together, which is kind of what I've done. And then as you go along, you can use your setting, setting and measuring techniques by uh, measuring along with your pencil um, and double check height and width relationships. You can check horizontal and vertical alignments. You can see here that I'm going back in, double checking an ellipse and actually redoing the top part of the ellipse so that it's more accurate. Um, use any axis and construction lines that you didn't use in the first place. And then the coolest thing about this method is that um, rather than erasing, you just get out your bit of uh, tissue paper or chamois cloth or whatever you're using, and you can rub the drawing back into the ground. And that way you're building up more tone, building a more even ground, and you're not having to erase and fix a lot of mistakes in a very tedious and time-consuming way. Um, at this stage, you want to be very meticulous about um, alignment, measurement. It's very easy to change things in this stage. and the, the further you go along, the harder it is to make massive changes. You can make changes in the later stages, and you should never be afraid to do that, but it's easiest at this point. Once you've done the wireframe, um, that can get a little bit complicated and visually chaotic, so what you can do is rub those construction lines back into the tone so that, you're, um, that you create a more understandable um, set of objects. And so now this is about the third or fourth pass through the drawing. I'm getting very specific about the edges of these books um, because they're kind of used, they've been read a couple of times, so they're a little bit curved, the bindings are bent, and I want to pick up on that. I don't want to just um, rely on putting a title to make it look like a book. Um, and the way, the way that they're stacked, they're kind of offset, so I want to be sure that that comes across. And then any kind of subtleties like damage to the corners, whether the front cover is peeling up a little bit above the actual uh, pages, I want to pick up on that. So one of the things that that does is that makes it a very specific drawing, um, but you don't have to go in and start um, drawing out the 
text in the cover. What you're getting is a very structurally specific drawing. And then just erasing more construction lines and then what you can do is do width and height comparisons from object to object. So I have this kind of tin, uh, tin can looking thing and it's about uh, one and one third um, of the ball or the ball is one and one third of the little tin can. So double checking, making sure that those relationships work out. Um, then, then I'm going through and kind of being very specific about the edges of this as well, making sure that the circle is pretty good. Um, because I have a very important interaction between the, uh, the ball here and these stack of books because the ball's shadow kind of goes over the stack of books a little bit. And then anytime you have kind of background objects, you want to be sure that you're being very particular about where the where the overlapping point is. Um, ultimately, no one's going to put your drawing up next to the still life, but you're trying to get a certain sense of reality. And the only way to do that is to draw from these actual physical objects. Um, and I forgot to mention at this point, you shouldn't be drawing from any photographs um, because photographs have a tendency to flatten an image. And what we're trying to do is translate from three dimensions into two dimensions. If you do use photography, what happens is you have to translate from a two dimensional image into a three dimensional model in your head and then translate it back into two dimensions onto the page. So it's a very complicated process. And it works if you have a lot of experience, but at this stage, um, you probably don't have the kind of experience that it takes to do that. Um, and you can almost always tell when someone's using photographic references because it has a, a tendency towards flatness that you get um, as a result of that um, translation process. And what you're trying to do with the structure is make the most of detail, right? So if there's a, a, sp a specific way that the box lid is attached, you want to get that in. Uh, if there's a specific curl and um, form for the lid of the tin like I have, you want to get that in. It's a little bit of a cone kind of thing. The lid is kind of doubled up where you can see some of the width of the cardboard. So um, as you go through the still life and finish out the forms and finish checking, you're, you're checking not just for structure, um, but for all the subtleties and details that you that you need to carry uh, throughout the drawing. 